friends, Teresa Louise here. Welcome to Long Arm Tuesday. <laughs> yep, what is today? Tuesday something. I don't know. 27th maybe? Anyway, I'm up here in the sewing room for a little while because it's raining outside. And uh, yeah, that kind of put a kibosh on my planting of the irises. So, first thing this morning, it was beautiful out there, but then the clouds rolled in and now it's raining. So, I thought I'd just come on for a little while and say hello and um, see how everybody's doing on Tuesday. Oh, wow. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Polly. Hello, Stephanie and Judy. Melina, how are you? Brenda, another Brenda. Awkward Quilter, hello, hello. Shelly Clark, hello. How's everybody? Oh good, I'm glad uh, Willa moved. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to step on her. Hi Jane, how are you doing? Yep, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm all kind of purpley today. <laughs> so I'm up here quilting. Got to get these things done. Yep. And uh, this is my little tester thing that I use to, every time I put a new bobbin in or start a new row. Well, not always when I start a new row, but when I put a new bobbin in for sure, I always test my tension first. And so I have a lot of these strips that I use and I just keep adding on as I go. So this really gets super long. <laughs> so I need to add another piece to it. So I'll do that because I've already tested once already, so. Um, and I use, well, you guys know I'm not crazy about solids, right? So these, I make these little things <laughs> and that's what I use to um, test my bobbin, yeah. Hi, Diane. I have a bunch of them ready to go. And then I just save my scrap pieces of uh, batting. So I have a bunch of those. So I need to sew some of these on this. And then as I fill it up, you know, I just kind of cut it off when I'm ready to cut it off. <laughs> And then what do I do with them afterwards? Well, uh, I just toss them. Or um, and you could sew those together and make like a dog bed cover or, you know, something like that. Now, I, I kind of save them until I'm clean things up. And then I'm like, why do I have these? So then I just get rid of them. <laughs> Because they, they really can build up, you know. <laughs> but sometimes what you can do is, instead of take over the top of this and then just keep, you know, going on, want, you know, just keep adding and adding on the top. So you're just, I mean, eventually you're going to have to start out with a new piece because um, I think if it gets too thick, then it kind of mess, it'll mess things up. But anyway, that's just my theory. <laughs> okay. It was kind of messing me up because this phone was on and I could hear myself talking. I'm spinning. Sorry. Yeah, we got, we got bad weather, so. Hopefully I stay connected. 
Hi, Kathy. Looks like the Diamond Girls popped in. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Yeah, that's one thing I learned pretty fast is that your long arm should really be right up here, you know. So if it's shorter, then you're, you know, bending down, especially if you're doing a lot of free motion quilting, which I do because I don't, I'm not computerized. So um, probably wouldn't matter as much if you're computerized. Yes, spinning again. Sorry, you guys. Um, and she showed me where hers was, which is way up here. And I thought, all right, I'm going to try that. So I did. Oh, good. Brenda got off early. So she's got so time. Oh, that sounds like fun. I love some of her pattern, patterns and designs. I watch her uh, videos. Hi, Glenda. Hello, Susan. From the UK. Okay. Hi, Diane. I said, didn't I say hello to you? I thought I did. Well, you're one of the diamond girls, aren't you? <laughs> Hi, J. Bad. How's it going? Well, you know I love you, Diane. Okay, I'm going to get started. I'm going to try and move you guys over here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but. Good stuff. It is a banana, huckleberry, um, some strawberry yogurt. Oat milk, which, you know, I probably wouldn't drink that oat milk, milk normally, but it tastes pretty good in a, in a shake. And then, yeah, the huckleberries were frozen and a couple of ice cubes in there because I like mine real cold. So, hello, Living Green. How's it going? Hi, Joan. Okay. All right, you guys are going to go for a little ride. I'm going to try and zip up my zipper. It's cold. It's cold here today. And it was so nice this morning really sunny and uh, took the dogs for a walk you know didn't need a jacket or a sweater or anything because it was so warm out there and then like I said the clouds rolled in and now it's cold <laughs> hi Billy okay here we go Let's see if I can. Yeah, that's not too bad. How's that? Yeah, I know, Katie. <laughs> I know it's you. Hi, June. Okay, Diane. Thanks for popping in. I uh, appreciate it. All right, you're not really probably going to be able to see the design, I know. And actually, I'm like using, all right, let me <laughs> get my brain thinking. This is a Christmas, I think it's going to be a wall hanging or maybe, well, whoever ends up with it can decide, but um And there's, you know, green and this red, and then there's this black. 
And so there's a lot of different colors of solid. And boy, I've had this on here for so long trying to figure out what thread to use. And I just decided I'm going to have to do two, at least two different colors because I don't want a, a dark color in on this white. I just, I don't know. I just don't think it would look good. So I'm just going to go around and do all the dark areas with this dark gray. And it actually looks kind of uh, silvery, which, which actually works on here because this black lines. So it kind of matches that. So that, I think that was a good, and, um, although it is really hard to see this thread on the black. I mean, super hard. I can't, it's, yeah, I've been having a hard time. Okay, where am I at? <laughs> you know, can't see where I'm, where I've been and where I'm going. Okay. And I'm not, a lot of these are applique, and I'm not going over the applique with this overall design that I'm doing. And I'm just doing um, uh, holly, holly berries. And uh, yeah, I don't even know if you could see if I got closer. Because now I'm going to just, I'll try and bring you a little bit closer and see if you can see what I'm doing. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Lois. Hello, Cheryl. Oh, Lisa, you got smoke from Canada again. Their fires are still going. Oh, boy. Hi, Martha. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Susan. Okay, let's try and bring you up just a little bit closer. I could probably try and zoom in, but I think that light is going to make it to where you can't really see either. So I'm just sewing from here over, and I'm actually almost done. So I'll be rolling the quilt up here in a few minutes. Okay, I'll just set you right there. And I hope this isn't too loud. Okay, figure out my path. Come right out here. looks pretty good. Okay, just keep going. Let's see. Kelly said, Lisa, where do, uh, do you live? The smoke wouldn't be from BC. We have fires in the north part of the province, but nothing in the southern third due to the rain last week. Oh, that's good, Kelly. Hi, Debbie. She said, hello, Miss Teresa. I finished the strawberry quilt for Miss Tracy's challenge. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Oh, good. Have to send her an email with a picture. That was a lot of fun to put together. Hi, Donna Bogart. How are you doing? Yeah, I bet that was. It looked like fun. Okay. Okay. 
let's see, I need to go up there. So I'm going around there. pretty good. So how is everybody today? What are you guys doing? And I'm just going to keep on going. I can see it on the green okay just fine but over here on the black I can I, I can see the texture but I cannot hardly see the thread at all so making it a little challenging hi Shirley okay Jones says clean up my mess made chocolate chip cookies and peanut butter cookies and now I have to clean Ugh. yeah that's one bad thing about doing that kind of stuff you have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, though. I need to do that one of these days. Anyway, I have to just kind of really be careful what's my uh, path and see where I'm going. I think I'm going to go ahead and have to stop. I don't know if I can get another one in there before I... I don't have much more room. I might be able to get the berries in there, though. I looked up uh, trigger thumb <laughs> yesterday on the Google, read a lot of interesting things about it, said it could take up to six weeks for the pain to go away. 
and um, caused by like um, people with arthritis or people who have bone spurring, which that's me. The bone spur can push out on the tendon, and so it's the tendon that's not working properly. And, and it also said that vitamin B6, you know, like I looked up what vitamin deficiency could cause um, trigger finger, trigger thumb. And it said B6. So I thought that was interesting. And but it also said that you should be um, wearing a splint, a thumb splint. So I, I was worried about wearing that, that my finger would really stove up, you know, and I, it would get stuck like that permanently. <laughs> so that's why I hadn't been putting a splint on it or anything. <coughs> Excuse me. So last night, I went through my stuff and I found this um, little foamy thing. <laughs> For your fingers and I just cut it down and I put it on my thumb like that and I have to try really hard to I mean I could bend it but it kind of prevents me from bending that thumb and then I put a, a brace on a wrist brace which covered my thumb here and put some padding on it because it was pushing really hard right there where it hurts and I slept most of the night with that wrist brace on, but I finally had to take the brace off. And then I slept pretty good the rest of the night after that, but I left this on and I slept so much better uh, not waking, because my thumb kept waking me up, you know, because you move stuff in your sleep. And yeah, it kept waking me up and But last night, it didn't wake me up. So that's good. But I'm still going to talk to the doctor about maybe doing those injections, you know. Hi, Kay. Now, when I do these little wall hangings and stuff, I use my... Um, pieces of scrap batting so <laughs> I need to cut this off even here then I'll bring up another piece of scrap and line it up there if I can find one if this is long enough. Nope, not quite long enough. Let's see. I think this one might be long enough, but it'll probably be too short. Then you just snug that up real close to each other. And you could take a needle and thread and just kind of stitch those together if you want, if you're worried about it. Yeah, I'm going to look and see if I have one that's a little bit longer. Let's see. Nope. Not that one. 
that's yeah that one will be better I think that'll work and lay that back on there bulging there because I haven't quilted that yet and what I think I'm probably going to do is just go ahead and base this whole thing in and I want to make sure it's stable um, I could if it was regular batting, but it's polyester, that, and that doesn't work very good. <laughs> okay. Oh, Debbie. Yeah, it is. I, I feel sorry for them. Prayers for the, them to heal quickly. It is painful. Yeah, this is a wall hanging. A Christmas wall hanging, Kelly. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Joan. Hi, Candy. Oh, okay, Kay. Watching Star Trek. I love Star Trek. Kelly's going to work on blocks. For the layer chops pattern from Jordan Fabric. Fun, fun. And sorry, you guys, the phone rang. Sounds. I don't know who it is. Do is eat broccoli. Yeah, the splint did help quite a bit, but I did notice that um, you know my thumb is was more swollen this morning having that on. So I don't know if it was too tight. Oh, the same effect with just a band aid. That's a good idea. See now it's stuck. <laughs> I need to quit using it. Uh, my doctor had me put a rubber band around the affected finger and the one next to it, but it was my ring finger. Yeah, Brandon told me that I should do that, you know, wrap those two up, but you know, it's my right hand and it is so hard to do stuff without your thumb. <laughs> Okay, broccoli. Awesome. Oh no, Diane. Hi, Diane Baker. Um, this is the first time I've had developed trigger finger from these um, um, bone spurs. But, I mean, this one, you know, a few months back was pretty sore but it never had trigger finger but boy that thumb anyway i guess what i should have done was outline that i'm going to use some pins here keep forgetting that I moved everything so I go over there for the pins but they're over here on this other side um yeah that was the other thing icing it that was the other thing to do not heat but ice and I started taking ibuprofen too for anti-inflammatory I'm going to 
do is roll this back out so I get rid of that bulge. And I think I'm going to stabilize this block with some pins so it quits rolling on me. And this isn't one of this is not my quilt. This is um, Susie's, and I'm doing this as a donation. And she's, I'm doing the long arming, you know, as a donation. She is going to put this in a raffle for. Um, raising funds for the our local library so that's what this is all about okay so that should help might need to put one up here too So what I kind of, the longer it's going to take to heal up, so <laughs> I need to stop using it, but I will when I get these quilts done. I have to get these quilts done because I've had them way too long and um, she was here yesterday wondering how, how it was coming. <laughs> and of course she showed up right when I was taking a nap. That happened to me twice yesterday. <laughs> the first time it was the Lynn Care, Lynn Care truck to do something with Brandon's machine. And I and in there I just had gotten to sleep. Okay. So, so that woke me up. So then I was up. So I, you know. And then I came up here and did some stuff for a little while. And about four o'clock, I'm like, oh, God, I got to go lay down for a little bit. And sure enough, as soon as I did, <laughs> just about to fall asleep and the dogs started barking. So that helped those pins that help stabilize that. See, it's not quite as poofy. It is still poofy up there, but that's okay. But I got that where I want it. So that's really going to help as I go down here. And um, there's two of these that are, they're exactly the same. So, and I'm probably going to quilt them exactly the same. As long as this, this first attempt turns out okay, then <clears throat> the next one I'll just do it the same way. Let me roll this up just a little bit more. Okay. Let's see what you guys are saying. Over just a little bit more. It's a little tighter. You need to throw this one away. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty bent up. 
Okay. Yes, thumbs are pretty important. Oh, that was the other thing I put in my drink, Polly, was ginger. Turmeric really hurts my stomach. Hi, Mary. Okay, she's working on um, teas. Whoops, Miss T. Scrap basket quilt. I should have brought my my stand over here because <laughs> that's not working. Okay, let me get to the other side here. Time to take this sweater off. I'm warming up. I turned the heater on in here. Oh, I got my sew sampler box yesterday too. Um, so that was fun. I, I don't know that I really care for the new shipping thing that they're doing. <laughs> was um I know I know they need to find the best price possible you know um, shipping price but the tracking of it was all over the place I couldn't figure out where it was and anyway and I do think it took longer to get to me And then I got my package from So Yeah. And <laughs> I actually had forgotten what was in it, except for I knew there was Tulip Pink in there. But I forgot what the rest of the fabric was. So I can show you all that stuff if you guys want to see. I thought I heard somebody coming. Okay, let me roll this out. Now I'm going to put in a basting stitch. Whoop. Sorry guys, I had to move you over a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now I don't actually do the basting stitch that they have programmed in here. Oh God, I hate that thing. So I just go down um, to the lowest stitch number I can, which is four, and use that as a basting stitch. Um, Teresa, no, I don't have the um, computerized. So I can't do any computerized programs. I just do free motion. Um, the frame is, um, I think the frame is a Bernina uh, frame that actually was made by Grace. Okay. And the Grace, my uh, long arm is um, a Grace Cunique. 
15. Uh, 15R, I think. So I can, if I want to, at some point, buy the computerized for it and I can hook it up to this. Um, that's why I bought this machine so I could have that option if I ever, you know, got the money to do that. But you want to see the haul? Okay. Bye, Kathy or Kelly. Thank you. Okay, see you around. Oh no, Brenda. Replaced your broken windshield, took your stash money. Thank you, uh, Mary. Well, I'm going to pray for your husband, Shelly. Okay, now, wait, let me, okay, let me put you back down there, watch over here, You're gonna fall down, <laughs> okay, now I'm just gonna base that, and I need to put this on, because I do not want my fabric, fabric to ball up under there. Yeah, I figure I'll ice it when I get done up here. Let's see. And I go just as close as I can to the um, to the edge, and also I did you notice I don't take my pins out? I just go right over them because I kind of figure out where my needle is, and I can jump over the the pin. <laughs> I know, sometimes I miss, but for the most part, I do pretty good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to keep on going. Let me turn the click off on that. Okay, that's far enough. this again and this one um, also it showed finger exercises that you can do I didn't really do any of those but Okay, I gotta switch this direction. And Brandon's back taking a nap. Well, I'll be glad when they get his part taken care of so he can go back to having a little bit of energy I feel bad for him he can do a little bit of stuff and then 
then it just wears him out, you know. I'm like, now you know how it, I feel. <laughs> That's me every day. <laughs> okay. I really do not like um, screen printed fabric. It is a booger to long arm. I hate to tell you that. And um, the best thing to use when you're using, the best needle to use when you're using um, screen printed fabric is a ballpoint needle. When you're sewing, sewing it, and when you're quilting it. But the problem is, you don't always know when you've gotten screen printed fabric. Until you start trying to quilt it. Why don't I like it? Because when you use a sharp needle, it, it makes the fabric like look like it has a run in it. And it turns white. White threads come up from the bottom and um, the only thing you can do is take like a permanent green marker and kind of mark those out Okay, I have a question for you guys. Do you know what, hi Liz, do you know what, and don't go look it up, okay? Don't go look it up. Gelatin is made out of. I had no, I, no idea until last night. <laughs> and then I was like, why did I learn that? <laughs> that was something I really did not need to know. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the article I read said, um, like, it was made out of the skins of animal, animal skin, mostly pork, so pig, pig skin, and uh, Yeah, we see the doctor Friday. Uh, Mary, they put him, uh, they upped some of his med medication that um, um, is supposed to slow the pulse down, but then it slowed it down too much. So he ended up in the hospital with that. And then um, I think they've got it straightened out now but he's still in afib you know and so he just gets wore out so easily but the um plan is to do that um okay right now i know candy i thought it was made out of fruit too i did Um, but there is another, now I didn't research this, but I guess there's another um, product 
you can use if you're a uh, vegetarian or vegan. Uh, but I didn't really read about that because I'm not. <laughs> but I, I might go check that out and see how that works. Yeah, I just kind of stumbled across that because um, I was curious about how to strengthen your fingernails and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I had, had always heard that, you know, eat jello because it'll strengthen your fingernails. And um, it, so what I found out was no, no, jello does not strengthen your fingernails it's actually the collagen from the animal from animals so however it did look like um jello was good for you for other things like your hair and a lot of people use um, gelatin and they make a face mask um, so that the collagen and the jello gets absorbed in your skin <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, you just learn all kinds of stuff on Google. And um, I know, you know, you can't believe everything you read, but <laughs> some of it's true, right? Okay. That is all basted in. I can take all my pens out and then I'll go over and take a little break and I'll show you the fabric haul I got before you guys take off. Um, those of you who wanted to see it, make sure I have all my pins out of there. I end up um, forgetting they're there and then I you know slide across it and that's that doesn't feel good okay I can I can actually leave that right there but I'll turn it off there and Open the door a little bit, get some air. Okay, that might let me move my stuff over here. Okay, I'm gonna pick you up. Here we go. One, two, three. I should have said on three, huh? I hope that doesn't fall down. <laughs> I had I had it up pretty high. Oh, oh, that feels good to sit down for a minute. Oh, don't fall. Whew. Got hot doing that. <laughs> and ha yeah, only half of what the doctors tell you, and. I mostly, you know, I don't read any of that political crap. I get so tired of hearing that. <laughs> oh, oh, it is, Shelly? Thank you for that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Made from insects. Are you kidding me? Boy, they will just use anything, won't they? <laughs> Gosh. Now, I was talking to Brandon about the jello and 
uh, um, gelatin this morning and I said what what do you suppose the guy was thinking when he came up with that because it it was like back in the early 1800s that um, the guy came up with it and he actually put a patent on on gelatin and um, Brandon said well he was probably cleaning the animal you know harvesting it and some of that you know uh, product <laughs> is kind of jelly looking <laughs> and he probably got to thinking now what can I do with this wonder if I add some strawberries to it if it would taste better <laughs> That was Brandon's line of thinking. <laughs> exactly, Candy. I hear you, Sarah. Yeah, um, they're not talking about doing a pacemaker at this point, so they'll do the ablation first. Oh, pectin is made from fruit. There you go. You should use pectin then. <laughs> that sounds much better. Oh, I know why I was um, looking things up is because of the gal that told me about the beet juice and strawberry jello jelly and or yeah jelly so i got that's what i was looking up and so all this other stuff kind of starts coming up you know and um what what were they thinking when they had all that beet juice how can i get this to be thicker and i wonder why use the beet juice with the jello to make jelly you know and then somebody else made a comment about they wondered if it wasn't like a, a depression era thing and I, I bet you that's it because my um, husband's grandmother um, in her old cookbook she has got some interesting recipes in there and I wonder if I go went through that if I would find that recipe for jello so you kind of just tried to make do with what you had okay rhubarb raspberry jam using jello packets Hey, Mona. Okay, you guys ready to see the stuff? <laughs> I got all the pieces I wanted cut out too from my calendar quilt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got a little peek. Yes, it was Saturday night in um I was bored. <laughs> and there goes so yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Diversity love. Hello. There is a depression era cooking channel. They have a lot of detail. There's another, I haven't watched this in a while. I'm going to have to go look for it. One back in, you know, a long time ago. 14, 1500s, whatever, over in the UK. About all the things that they used there for cooking and what part of the animal they used and all that stuff. Yeah. You eat all kinds of weird things when you're hungry. 
Okay, so they had Tula Pink on sale <laughs> one night, and so I just couldn't pass it up. So this is the find the it's Fairy Dust True Colors. And it's all, they're all the same pattern, but they're just different colors. So there's this one. Isn't that pretty? So these are all one yard cuts. So all of this will go in my Tula Pink stash. This one is um, lavender, I would say. Purplish lavender. There's also a Colonial Cooking Channel. He focuses on American traditional kitchen, food storage, and cooking. Oh, do you, you know the names of these channels by chance? Because I would uh, like to check them out. I like watching cooking channels. And, you know, I really like history. And this is really bright pink. Okay, bright pink. And um, the sale was three fat quarter or, or three yard cuts for something. I don't know. I don't remember how much it was. And you didn't really get to pick which colors you got. Um, but they did pretty good with me for me, a variety. I did end up with two pinks. I would have rather had two whites or two of the uh, lavender, but you know, that's okay. I can use the pink in something. <laughs> so here's another pink. Yeah, it was random. And sometimes that random thing works out okay. And, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't. And I figured I, you know, even if I got all yellow, I'd be okay too. Because, <laughs> you know, it is tulipy. I love this white one. The colors really show up really good in that. So, got that. And then this is kind of like a peach color. So, I think some of these colors are new to this basic, right? <clears throat> because I don't have this peach and I don't have this bright lime, limey color yellow either. That one's really pretty. I would have liked to got two of those, <laughs> but only one. Hi, Jim. Yeah, Jim said he got some weird stuff in those random lots. Yeah, I got some weird stuff. One time I, um, you know, they, what do they call it? scrap bag. One time I got the scrap bag of batiks and um, I wasn't really happy with it at all. So I never did that again. <laughs> I got some golf material. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I think that peachy one is really pretty. So those are the Tulas. Very, I'm very happy because, you know, they are one yard cuts, so I could be able to use them in some borders or, I don't know if I'd use them for binding. I don't think so, but, so I got to put those over there with Tula, my Tula stuff. It's growing. I'm, I was thinking, um. Yesterday, I need a new section for my Tula stuff because 
it's <laughs> overflowing <laughs> the container that it's in. Okay, and I totally had forgotten that I got some white on white from them. If I'd have remembered, I probably wouldn't have bought that other stuff from the local quilt shop the other day that I got. So now I have plenty of background fabric. So I have no excuse, right? <laughs> so this is a white on white. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see the pattern. The pattern is really pretty. It looks like a quilting block. But I don't know that you're going to be able to see it. So five yards of that. So I can put that up. And then I got some three yard cuts and um, this one is from Andover Fabrics. It's probably, it's by Juicy Juice and it's probably a, a basic line, but isn't that pretty? It looks a little brighter on the computer but three yards and the reason why I got this was I want to do make a quilt or a couple of quilts using some different colors of background now that I don't typically do that and I thought you know, I really need to like step out of my comfort zone and try something different. And so I, that's why I got this one because I thought this would be an awesome color, you know, for a background. So I got that one. And then I also got this. This is a three yard cut also. And I have no idea who it's made by. The salvage is, doesn't say, and it actually kind of feels a little more rough. It almost feels like a woven. It is pretty. It's very pretty. And I bet you it's a woven because this is what the um, salvage looks like. So my guess is woven, right? But they always, t they usually tell you. And, and maybe they did say something and I just don't remember. Definitely is heavier. Definitely heavier. This might be something you use. I don't know if I'd use it in a quilt or not now that I feel it, because it does feel heavier. It's pretty. I, uh, yeah, I hear you, Martha, um, about the scrap bags. <laughs> oh, is it um, board broadcloth? Have they been selling that? It, it, no, it's not really canvas, but it's pretty close. I ha I do have some like linen fabric and feels even a little heavier than that. And it pretty much looks the same on the inside as it does the outside. broad cloth. Okay. Well, I wish they would have said that. <laughs> but anyway, it is pretty color. And I'll see how I'm going to use it. Maybe I wonder if it um, does it get softer after you wash it. Now this one, on the other hand, is very soft, very pretty. And let me see. It is a Michael Miller fabric. 
watercolor flowers and it is super soft. So I thought this would look really good in a border or maybe even, you know, on a smaller quilt because it's three yards, you know, backing. But yeah, that's, and you know, it's purple. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> I love me some purple <laughs> and lavender. So there's those. And that's it from the, um, so yeah. So let me see here. Oh, you used to make shirts out of broad, um, broad cloth? Okay. Oh, it might soften up after multiple washes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Shelly. She used some woven with a quilt. And uh, mixed with regular cottons, good. Um, it didn't really feel like duck cloth. Um, the only bad thing, well, you know, you could use that for the inside of the bag. I would want something prettier on the outside. Okay. Oh yeah, I bet it does last longer than cotton. I could see that, Katie. Okay, so do you guys want to see the sew sampler box? <laughs> um, what is linen? Um... Uh, I would have to look it up for the definition. <laughs> Hi, Rochelle. How's it going? Hi, Constance. Could, um, it's not linen, says Living Green. Uh, thank you, Shelly. Linen is made with flax. Uh, I appreciate you answering that. <laughs> Because at that moment, it was totally gone from my brain. Okay. Oh, um, Sarah, you got some that is pretty stiff feeling. Yeah, that feels pretty stiff, too. It's pretty close to canvas, I think. Um, not quite as heavy. Okay, got the, if you have already seen, or if you get the sew sampler box and you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to see it, this is the time to stop watching. <laughs> or close your eyes and I'll tell you when I'm done or leave the room, I don't know, whatever, um, because I'm going to show you what is in the, everybody should have gotten it by now, unless you're um, overseas, because uh, it is pretty close to the end of June, so this is the June box, life is so good, life is good in June, that's the cover, and 25% off Fat 8 bundles. So I'm going to check that out. Now the other thing on here is a reminder about the Designer Mystery Block of the Month. If you guys are interested over at the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, that Block of the Month starts in June of this year. And there's limited membership available. So... That's something you're interested in, designer mystery block of the month. You might want to go check that out. 
I haven't done those. So, and I got too much to do already, so. Oh, you haven't? Okay, Sarah. But I just thought I'd warn you, so. I know. I have a hard time resisting. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So, let's take everything out. Get rid of the box. You guys save your box. I used to, when I first started, I'd leave the pattern and the fabric and everything in there. But then, you have to go through the box to see what's in there, you know. So, I, I quit doing that. So, now I just throw the boxes away. And then I put the kits in a Ziploc bag with the pattern if I want to do it. That way I can see what's in there. Okay, here we go. So the first thing on the list is Sunnyside Fat 8 Bundle. Ooh, I'll open this up and show you all the fabrics. Very nice. Moda fabric. And it valued at $20.98. And then we got a Creative Grids 4.5 by 4.5 ruler. Now, we've gotten this before. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got the perfect 5-inch ruler designed by So Emma. So we got this one a couple of years ago. Okay, so we have a 5-inch from before and now a 4.5-inch. And, and I kind of like these Creative Grid rulers. They do have a non-slip thing on the back of them, which makes it really nice. So, not unhappy about that. $12.99, that seems a bit high, but, you know, everything has gone up, right? Okay, the next thing we have is G-Easy Organizing Stickers and Clips. So, it's like those Wonder Clips, but you get little stickers that are numbers and the alphabet. to put on the clips and then you would use it to you know if you're cutting out fabric for your pattern then you can either number your pieces or um, use the alphabet they also have little size stickers in here okay now this this is okay um, I've been doing this kind of thing on my own already but I get um, the sheets of numbers and the alphabet from like the dollar store or dollar general, right? And they're just a, a buck or two. And they're pretty sticky. This is actually from GE Designs. And $10.98. Now, that's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Because you get one, two... You get three big clips and three little clips. And yeah, I think $10.98. Um, yeah, that's too much for that, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, the next thing we get, finally, they listened to me. And they gave me some sewing machine needles. Yeah, okay. I'll give him a thumbs up on that one. <laughs> I've been saying for two years, give me some sewing machine needles. Jeez. These are 90 by 14. Okay, that's okay. Um, I use the 9014 for little bigger projects. Typically, I use a 8012 when I'm piecing. Um, so, is a universal needle. And I usually use the quilting needle. 
but that's okay. You know, these come in really handy when you're making bags and stuff. So I'm okay with that. Letter M. Oh, yeah, they stop at the letter M, don't they? Huh. I guess they don't, they figure you're not going to go beyond that. Is that all that's in there? Is that one sheet? Hi, Jamie. She said she usually uses the 8012 too. Oh, yeah. A to M. Well, that's being pretty stingy. I mean, they had a whole bunch more room on here to print things. You know, this whole line right here is blank. They could have used. And then there's two blank sections right there. I guess you could write on those yourself. Yeah. So they still come off. All right. I still think uh, 1098 is too much because I can get these clips on Amazon for quite a few of them for a lot less than that. <laughs> okay. This, I think, should have been like in the bonus section, right? Bonus item. I would have felt better about it. But no, this is the bonus item, and it is Iron Clean, easy way to clean your iron surface. It removes fusible facings and sticky residue. Check out our entire product line at www.bonash.com. Okay, so just to look at this, it kind of looks like fabric softener sheets. <clears throat> Hi, Kim. And it, and it smells like fabric soft, softener sheets. Looks like it and smells like it. It's exactly what that is. It's, a, it's the sheets from the dollar store. <laughs> Right? Huh. I wonder if it has a... Made in Puyallup, Washington. It gives, it gives you all the instructions. But anyway, that's... You know, they smell, they don't smell like the downy ones. <laughs> and they feel like the dryer sheets too. Oh, they work great. S. Taylor said they work great. Well, I'm going to try them, okay? And then I'll take my, my giggles back. <laughs> hey, so Terry, I will definitely try that. Now... Then, uh, just a couple of months ago, we got a iron, iron cleaner product, too. Did anybody ever try that? These are... Now, the bonus value is $3.98. So, these are $3.98. That's reasonable, you know. Uh, yeah, I think the... I think these clip thingies should have been more like $3.98. In my my humble opinion okay ooh the quilt pattern is really cute check it out I like that my iron needs cleaning too Brenda <laughs> okay this is cute it's 53 by 53 too um, you need two and a quarter yards of background and then one and an eighth for the accent. So, you know, your accent colors are going to be these big squares. So that's why you need a little bit more for that. And then you can use this 
that eight bundle that you received. I might have to make this one. I really like it. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that would be cute. Okay, so there's that. That's 10 bucks, 9.98. And then the next pressed flowers quilt along is um, block three, and it's called Pansy. That is cute. So I can get that one cut out, and maybe next weekend we can work on that. So cute. So I am doing these. You can kind of see right there's one of them up, up there. And I'm actually caught up on that. <laughs> Pansy. Very cute. Okay. And that, now you cannot get these patterns. You got, you know that. They're exclusive to the to this box, but you can join the pressed flowers quilt along. Um, just go to the Fat Quarter Shop. There actually is a link in my description box below this video that'll take you right over to the Fat Quarter Shop right on this page. And um, it you do have to pay for it. It's $4.98, I think. I'm not affiliated. Uh, I don't get no money for it or nothing. I just put it there for you <laughs> in case you wanted to go and join. Okay. The, those dryer sheets are uh, getting to my nose. Oh, the pin, the needles were three seventy four. Is that? I think that's about normal. Yeah, Shelly, the pattern is really cute. Okay, so that's all that's in the box. Let me open this so we can see if I can get it open without scissors. Sunnyside by Camille. Made in Korea. Okay, look at these. Very pretty. There's that one. Hi, Valerie. And, ooh, now I really like this one. A toss flower one. Dark blue background. Yeah, that's pretty. Let me fold these back up as I go. And this is okay. Nice blender. That is pretty. Uh, here's another one, same pattern on, on green. You love those colors, Brenda? Very pretty. There's kind of, you know, a soft, you know, like earth, earthy tones, I would say. This one's very nice blender. Nice blue. Ooh, the one coming up is really pretty. Nice, soft, kind of a teal, light teal, greenish color with a tossed flowers. Hi, Nikki, how's it going? Uh, no, not Lori Holt, it's um, Camille. Uh, let me look in the book, because this page, the thing is so small, I can't read it, okay. Um, Ross Gelly, Camille Ross Gelly by Moda. I probably butchered that. Sorry, Moda Fabrics. This is her. She does do pretty fabrics. I we've gotten fabrics from her before. Ooh, this one's pretty. 
Look at that one. Very pretty. Ooh, this one is nice. This a nice blender. Little different. I like that. Another flower toss, but they're it's more on the orange side. Still pretty. And then the same flower toss, only more of a really dark maroon color. It almost looks like the fabric that they used in the uh, pressed flower. Huh, interesting. Anyway, 10 of those fabrics. And... I think they are very pretty. I'm going to have to go over there in my stash and see what other fabrics I have from her and see if I'm able to mix them in and make a bigger quilt. Because, you know, make it bigger, right? <laughs> go big. Is it your birthday, Jim? Happy birthday. I'm just going to put that on there. So, I love the fabric. I like the ruler. I like getting needles. That's awesome. Um, I can't wait to try the iron sheets. That looks very handy and easy to use. So, and a good price. So, check those out. Mm, not crazy about this thing. But, you know. Overall, it's a pretty good box. So, what did you guys think? Uh, also, the shipping, I kind of had a problem with how they were shipping it. But like I said earlier, I totally understand them trying to find a less expensive shipping method. Okay, so... For now, I am going to keep everything in the box, and who is it again? <laughs> Gosh darn you, Brenda. Uh, <laughs> who is it? It is a 10-piece Fat 8 bundle of Sunny Side by Camille Ross Kelly Ross Kelly R O S K E L L E Y Ross Kelly Yeah, I think it, I thought it, too, Bonnie, I thought it was Bonnie and Camille, but it doesn't say Bonnie on here anymore. Color ranging from cheddar, so that orange they're calling cheddar, and burgundy to a soft green and blues. A vintage modern look. So, there you go. Oh, Bonnie retired, says Jamie. And Kay said the mom retired. That's right. I think I heard that. Okay. At least she's okay, right? So, there's the box. And I'm keeping the coupon out because I'm going to go look. <laughs> See if there's anything there I have to have. Okie dokie. So, there's that. Yeah. Yeah, well, stop spending your money on windshields and stuff like that, Brenda. Don't buy any food for a month. Use up all that old stuff. Yep, that's how you spell it. Okay. Hi, Amy. 
did you see that I got my tulip pink? I know you said you're taking a nap, so you don't have to answer me. <laughs> Constance picked up um, paper piecing pattern of the Jaguar. Cool. Um, who Who is that made by? Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate your comment about my husband. Don't forget the thumbs up, says Jim. Joan has her block three cut up. Awesome. She thinks it'll be pretty. Constant needs some blenders. Yeah, blenders are handy to have. Um, oh, Jim's birthday is in a few days. Great. Linda says the fabric is pretty. Valerie just got home from a lovely quilting group. Good to see Teresa and everyone. Thanks, Valerie. And she also said, hi, Teresa. I love how honest you are. Thank you. <laughs> I saw the letter numbers with the clip kit and I thought it was overpriced myself. I have the Dollar Tree stickers. She has the Dollar Tree stickers too. Yeah, I do too. And um, I've used them on those clips before because, you know, we get some of those clips quite often. A few here and there. Really, Brenda? Thank you for the feedback on that. She said, I just got my side lock from Fallon to cut my half square triangle papers. I'm in love. That is awesome to hear. Oh no, Jim's iron died. And you just got it last August? Hello, Pat. Pat Boo. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Oh, see a brief rerun? Okay, sure, Pat. Yeah, here's the Tula that I got. They are one inch, or one inch, <laughs> one yard. So I got the Tula pink. That's quick. And then I got three three-yard cuts. And this was all from So Yeah. And then one five-yard cut. And it's a white on white for background. There you go. That was your quick view. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. Yeah, he's in taking a nap right now. Yeah, it is the fairy fabric. I like that too, Valerie. Yeah, it's hard to cut up those pretty animals in her in her line. So I like to make like project bags and stuff like that or or make it use it where you fussy cut the fabric and then use it in your quilt. Um, but and then you can still use those other pieces in scrap projects, you know, so it's not, to me, it's not like you're wasting a bunch of fabric because I don't throw any scraps away of the tulip pink stuff. I mean, I don't care how small it is. I might need it. <laughs> well, okay. If it's like, you know, a sliver, then yeah, I throw that away. I used that for the social light sew along. Oh, the fairy dust. I thought that was pretty. Yeah, it was a nice haul. 
I knew I had the I had ordered the tulip pink, but honestly could not remember what the other stuff was. And then um, last Saturday, um, so yeah, I went ahead and grabbed the fat quarter. Uh, I think it was ten fat quarters, and then they put a ticket in, you know, to win. And I only ordered one because I figure, you know, <laughs> your chances of winning are just as good with one ticket as with 10. That's how I look at it. Because they only draw one ticket, right? <laughs> I know you guys don't agree with me, but... Oop, power's going out. I better plug that in. Alrighty, I gotta get back to work on that quilt. Oh no, Terry. Well, the brothers lost my $100 order of Tula and it wasn't the first time, so I'm done. So sad. Oh, I'm sorry. And she did the ticket bundle as well. Let's see what the July calendar looks like so far. Okay, but I haven't glued anything down, okay? So it doesn't look that much different. Yeah, for the most part, I stay away too, but every now and again, because I like to go on and see if um, <laughs> if they have any too luck. Usually my friends will send me a message. Teresa, they're going to sell Tula on, so yeah, better get over there. See what good friends they are. All right. Now, I did cut that balloon down. So I took the basket off the balloon. So that's what the balloon looks like now. And it's going to be the base. And then, so let me bring that down. And that's what it kind of looks like right now. And I've been cutting cutting out these stars. So I'm going to have these stars here and there. And then the USA is up there on the top. With these bows. With the bows. So I think it's going to be cute. Um, now I just need to get this... Um, fusible on those and finish cutting these stars out. Yeah, they're going to just be, you know, placed here and there. They don't even have to be straight on there, you know, all the way around. Like that. So, there you go. <laughs> You like it? Thank you. Yeah, there's going to be stems because each one of these has to go into the flower pot, right? So there's going to be stems coming down. And I'm thinking about using that white strip that had the red stars on it for the stems. So, and they're going to be kind of, you know... I don't know. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Katie. Hi, Tanya. Thank you very much. Teresa says, cool. Thank you. Okay, what time is it? Two o'clock. Wow, time flies. Okay, I need to get back to work on that long arm. Yeah, that was um, Meredith in the chat. I don't know if she's here today. She's usually just listening. But yeah, that was Meredith, Meredith's idea to do the balloon as a vase. But, and I did have it on there with the basket 
still on there, but that just put it up there too high and it really didn't, it just looked like an upside down balloon. So I went ahead and cut it off. <laughs> Looks a little better. You love the stars on the side. Yeah, I think that looks cute. I'm not sure if I'm going to, if that, what do you guys think? Is that too many of these? Is it making it too busy? Um, yes, the proportions look good. Um, yeah, I'm going to make stems and pretty much leave them where, where they are. Yeah. Robin. Hi, Robin. Teresa thinks it's good. Robin thinks maybe too many. Maybe take one off. Looks better without the basket. Yep, I agree. Yeah, oh, right. They'll be spread out a little more. Definitely. I'm probably, I was thinking about maybe putting them in, like how they have the flowers in the pattern. One less. Hi, Christy. Turned out cute. Yeah, the bows are will be in on the diagonal in the corner. Yep. The bows aren't where, you know, I don't have the bows set on there where I'm, they're going to be, but they're going to be kind of like that. So the ribbon kind of hangs down in there. I don't know. I'll play around with it. Might put a few stars in here, too. Yeah, I know. But, you know, the, okay, the pattern has um, even number of flowers. They use six, but they put... Um, like kind of like I had it. They had so more on one side than they did the other, so it kind of looked okay. But yeah, that's what I typically say. It should be an odd number when you're doing arranging things. Or cut some of the shape of tulips. Oh, that's an idea. Teresa said, oh no, put it back. <laughs> yep, I knew that. Put in a star formation. Okay, we can try that. Do, do. Um, let's see, star formation, let me look at this. Um, maybe, that leaves a pretty big opening right there. And it doesn't really look like a star formation either <laughs> that way. There you go. Bullseye. Yeah, I'm just going to play with it until I, I get it.
Oh, hi, Lynn. So just playing around with this a little bit. Yeah, I think it'll make a difference when I add the stems. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to take a little break, and then I'm going to get back to the long arm. And you guys are welcome to stay on while I long arm and hang out and listen and visit or totally understand if you got other things you need to go do. But I need to keep on going, so. But I need to take a peanut break. Hi, Candy. I'll be right back. You're in charge. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and move you. In the count of three, I'm going to move the camera. So get ready. One, two, three. Now I'm going to lift it up. Move you back over here. There we go. I'm going to turn my machine back on. And let's see where I was up here. Okay. And take a look at, move my phone. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll show the pattern. Um, you see in the pattern how they have they have six flowers, and how they have it arranged doesn't look too bad. So that's how I was kind of thinking about arranging them. I don't know if that helps you. And for those of you that don't know, it's from the Calendar Quilts pattern uh, packet. And there's 12 um, quilts to make, one for each month of the year. And it's Kim Schaefer. There's a link in the Amazon to Amazon down in the description box below this video. It's around $17 and you get... 12 projects comes with a little instruction booklet for each project and then it comes with the applique paper trace you know to trace your pattern on trace trace your fusible so that's what that is. Hi 
Hi, Susie. That's true, Lynn. Yeah, I think it'll look great too, Brenda. Thank you. Yes, says Teresa. Yeah, that's right, Jane, or Joan. I'll show you. Hold on a second. Exactly, Rochelle. <laughs> Maybe stems to act as ropes to attach to the balloon basket. No, no leaves, Kay. Uh-uh. Okay, let me show you the um, thing that I was thinking about using for the stems. It comes off of the panel, too. Um, so I was thinking about using... See this here, this row of stars. So maybe cutting it out about a half an inch or less, you know, right along the stars and using, and there's a bunch of it. And then using that as the stem, right? I just cut out that whole length of stars. I think there should be enough. There's only one because uh, that one got cut up already on the top there. I think there'll be enough. So it'll, it'll look like a straw with stars on it. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know where you can find that panel. Um, it was in some yard sale stuff that I got. But let me see. I've cut it up so much. I don't know if there's a name on it still. I guess I should have wrote it down. Uh, a VIP print. Cranston Print Works Company. Let's see. Nothing in this. Nothing in the instructions. I'd have to dig in the garbage <laughs> to see if there's any more of what was on the side right here. But all I got is V dot I dot P dot print um, Cranston C-R-A-N-S-T-O-N Print Works Company. I don't even know how old it is. Like I said, it was in a bunch of other fabric stuff that I got in, um, at a yard sale. So, yeah, I've cut up quite a bit. <laughs> Hang that up as a like a banner. <laughs> Called Stars and Stripes Applique. Uh I think so. Yep, called Stars and Stripes Applique or Appliques. Okay. Oh, Rochelle says she sees a few on eBay. Awesome. And Shelly sees some in um, on it 
Etsy if you Google it. Okay. Does it say what year it came out with? Anybody? No? Just out of curiosity. If it's too much trouble, don't worry about it. Okay. I need to open this back up because I need to get up there a little bit higher. There. That's good. You know, maybe just a little bit more. I don't like bumping the the bar with the machine, you know. Okay, that looks good. And, okay, so I can go this way, down here. I need to get back up in here, so I need to get over this way. And then come back down, work my way around. And then I'll do something in the fox's tail, but not the same design. Maybe I'll just make echo the tail. That'll be okay. And then I can go, I'm going to go down to at least here at the bottom of this. And then I'll roll, roll this up. And I think I could take these pins out up here. Forgot those were in there. I'm glad I saw that. Okay. I like go um, gnomes too. They're so cute. Good night, Lynn. Take care. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Joan. Patterns are only suggestions. <laughs> I say it all the time. You guys know me so well. Okay, stop. I want to be on 10. So I'm going to work my way through the circles I just made. I call them <laughs> gosh darn it holly holly berry leaves and um i don't know if you guys have ever made the holly berry leaves they kind of you kind of get draw them out first a few times okay on your cheat vinyl that i have showed you several times draw those out and get the hang of those before you start because they can kind of mix, well, they do this to me. They kind of mix my brain up like, whoops, I just went the wrong way on that one. Um, but I have found that if you make the stem to the leaf first and then finish drawing out the holly around the 
the stem leaf part, it goes a lot easier. Um, it does, it works better for me that way anyhow. Okay, now this one, I want to try and get that up there. making three berries with two leaves coming off of it. Uh, the Cunique is uh, the 15R. And I found that the R is plenty big enough for me, you know, for personal use. But, you know, I do a lot of quilts for other people, too. And it, it just works really well for me. Um, if I had to do it over again and I had a little bit extra money, I probably would have bought the 18. Um, but I probably wouldn't have gone much bigger than that. If I had planned on doing like computerized quilting and really doing going hog wild on a long arm business, I would have probably gone 21 and computerized, um, but that's quite an investment. And while I do do quilts for other people, um, you know, I always tell them I only do um, free motion. So, and you know, I can really pretty much copy any pattern that's out there um, because I do have that artistic ability. So, you know. Anyway, I, I really like this machine. I haven't had any problems with it. I got it on sale, so it was um, fairly budget friendly. <laughs> and it's a lot better than trying to do your free motion on your domestic machine. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Oh, okay. 
It seems that I have two panels. Those stars are the cut line. Alrighty. Hi, Pam. How are you doing? Okay, Rochelle, thanks for popping in. Oh, Candy said she can't find the year, but it was $18 on Etsy if anyone is interested. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed saying goodbye to you, Jim. Take care. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Mary. That's really sweet of you. I hear you, uh, Pam. There is definitely not enough time in the day <laughs> to get everything done. Hi, Helen. Said it's always my preference to do free motion whenever I can on my long arms. I totally agree. <laughs> about free motion is um, you could do the same pattern on you know two different quilts but they're not gonna look the same at all you know they're um, they're gonna be unique okay now I'm gonna go try to get up here I should have done that already and then I can go this way and finish off over here. And then I can go ahead and roll forward. And like I said, on um, this white, I'm going to change my thread on the top. I'm going to leave the thread that I'm using in the bobbin, which is a really light gray. But the thread I'm using on the top is a really dark gray. Um, and I'm not having any problems with that. And when I change to white, I'll leave the light gray in the bobbin also. Um, 
All right, let's keep going. And sometimes if I don't have enough room, I'm only doing one leaf instead of two, which I think is totally fine. At some point, I'll try and bring the bring you over here so you can see the pattern. Well, I'm glad you're doing better, Kim. That's great to hear. Always continued prayers for you. Yeah, I agree. It is really freeing, <laughs> for sure. I feel um, so artistic, you know. It's an artistic expression. Right? Sometimes when I don't have room for the leaf, then I'm just doing like um, a little ribbon coming off of that just to fill that space. And I keep doing that here and there so it's a consistent, it isn't like a, like it would be like a, oh whoops, you know, type thing. It's part of the design. Like here, I'm probably not going to have enough room in between these two to make another leaf, but I can come and do a couple of like um, swirls or what they look like is ribbon, Christmas ribbon. break thread here and then I'll see if I can't pick the camera up and bring you over so you can see the design I am doing
can't squeeze these things with my other thumb, I'll tell you what. That it hurts. <laughs> okay. I see C C Cree Krill sixty four. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good, Cam. Got some hibiscus tea last week. Kind of bitter iced tea, yeah. Ooh. Oh, hi, uh, blueberry hibiscus tea. I bet that's good. All right, I'm gonna see if I can bring you over here. And what I'm gonna do is, ooh, I am looking good today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and flip the camera. So, at the count of three, okay? Get ready to move. Remember what I told you about my hair does not hold a curl? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, a three. Okay, I'm gonna lift you up now. Oops, and bounce you around. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. So, there's the design. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. But, okay, here's the little berries. And here's the leaf, right? There. And then this one comes off here, goes this way. And you see what I'm talking about in this black? You can't hardly see the quilting in that at all. I mean, I can feel it. You can barely see it in the red. But you can definitely see it in the green. So this color thread actually plays off of this color in this black. And there's a little fox and Noel. And then the gnomes. And then a Christmas package. So I'm going to keep doing this pattern all over in, in the borders. And then um, I probably am going to do something different in here. Now right here I can feel they used really, really stiff applique paper. I am not going to be able to go through that. Um, it is super thick, stiff. I can feel it. And that'll break my thread for sure. So I'll probably just go ahead and leave that um, and not quilt in it at all. But I'll do something here in the white with my white thread. So, there it is on this side. And I'm just going to do like an overall kind of meander type design. I might do pais some paisleys and circles and kind of just mix it up in there, kind of play around. So... There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put you back. Love the berries and holly. Pretty quilt. Did you have a kit or create it? Um, this is not mine. It is um, a friend here that is local. flip you around again um, 
uh, let's see. And there's actually two of these that are exactly the same. And this was actually um, a Christmas block challenge in our um, guild group. So these blocks were all made last Christmas and they were all donated to, to Sue, Susie, and um, she is put them together in a four, like a four patch, and then she's going to use them for um, a giveaway, or not a giveaway, a, um, she's going to auction them off for a fundraiser for the local library. So, there you go. All right, you guys, I think I'm going to go get some lunch and take a little break. Um, do you guys have any questions before I go? I'm going to turn this machine off. And then I'll come back up and get it done. I usually go quite a bit faster, but because I'm talking and showing you guys stuff, um, you know, it goes a bit slower. <laughs> there goes the telephone again. I don't know who's... Oh, good. It's not messing up my phone this time. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Christy. Hi, Zandra. Thank you, Cece. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call you. <laughs> um, well, he was taking a nap. I don't know if he still is. So he, he did pretty good this morning. Then he wore himself out. So now he's napping. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Hi, Joanna. How are you doing? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, my back's starting to hurt, too. Gotta go eat, take some medicine, lay down for a little bit, and then get back to work. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I hope you are having a blessed day, and um, yeah. Go make something, okay? I'll see you guys. Love y'all. Bye.